Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, hosting today's show. Up first, uh, satellite imagery showing uh, clouds uh, with a weakening front, but from uh, some moisture coming up to the Alaska Peninsula. A lot of clouds with some light rain, so I'm trying to say nothing. Heavy falls pass picked up about uh, 10 to 1500 of an inch of precipitation with uh, lesser amounts on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula there and then some more light rain condition moving into the eastern Aleutians there otherwise just uh, variably cloudy with some isolated showers over the western Aleutians and a uh, band of moisture bringing some light shower activity up across the Yukon Delta into the lower Yukon River Valley area and there are also some showers extended up to the south coast of the Seward Peninsula today and over the northern panhandle, some areas of uh, showery conditions, as well as the north Gulf Coast. Uh, some showers brought a uh, hundredth of an inch to Cordova, but Latoya Bay farther to the east had about uh, two-tenths of an inch of precipitation. Some showers also pushed into the Susitna Valley, Talkeetna, three-hundredths of an inch of rain there. Otherwise, up on the Arctic coast, easterly winds blew 20, 25 to 35 miles per hour in gusts today with uh, temperatures in single numbers. There were some areas of uh, flurries and low clouds and fog, but any additional snow was quite light. And uh, that front uh, really washing out along the Alaska Peninsula and that other band pretty much about in the same condition there, pretty weak. And we'll see uh, there is a 986 millibar low approaching the uh, eastern Aleutian, so winds kicking up to about 35 miles an hour there later tonight as that front pushes in toward Nikiski, or Nikolski, excuse me, Nikiski light winds with uh, dry conditions tonight there in Cook Inlet. Uh, you can see today isolated showers north Gulf Coast into the Panhandle and up over the Alaska Range but nothing heavy or very significant at all with some isolated snow and rain showers up over the Kobuk Valleys, maybe the Selawik Valley, and then down a little more extensive area of scattered rain and snow showers from the Seward Peninsula that's pushing into the St. Lawrence Island area. And looking at uh, tonight's forecast, that low deepens to 977 millibars as it moves north of the uh, Aleutian chain there. And the frontal burn gale force winds tightening the gradient up and increasing the rainfall. Rain becomes moderate to possibly heavy at times on the uh, Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula with rain slipping on up into Kodiak and some shower conditions into Cook Inlet and the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula. A little bit of an increase in the clouds for uh, northern Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound. Dry for the Panhandle, eastern interior dry up to the north slope. And for Friday, Aleutian, southern Bering Sea, unsettled. Periods of rain, Pribilof Islands, winds coming down behind the front. But uh, look for uh, small craft advisories, gale force winds, Alaska Peninsula along the southwest coast. With uh, rain along the coast. And now push into Kodiak Island, mostly cloudy, more clouds, more showers. Uh, Men who's going to sit in the valley tomorrow up to the Alaska Range, but drier conditions down over southern Kenai Peninsula. Isolated showers possible along the North Gulf Coast with uh, partial clearing. Same thing for the Panhandle, scattered showers, mainly south, partly sunny to the north, dry and mostly sunny over the northern half of the state. And for the outlook for Saturday. We've got dry conditions again for the pan, and I'll just risk of a shower, but uh, about the same chance seeing some sunshine actually there into the uh, Copper River Basin as well, mostly cloudy skies, but dry, and a little bit better chance of some moisture possibly getting north of the Alaska Range into the Tana Valley, 40 mile country, maybe even as far north as Beaver there, and maybe even Eagle could see a risk of a, ch a shower with uh, more in the way of clouds. Otherwise, stays mostly clear and dry up to the north and west, out to the Seward Peninsula. And uh, rain and showers for the Bristol Bay area, wet conditions for Kodiak Island, unsettled for the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern Aleutians. Looking at lows tonight, single numbers, north slope in the Arctic coast, uh, 10 to 20 for the lows in the Brooks Range. Otherwise, south of the Brooks Range, mid-20s to mid-30s for the overnight lows. And then all southern Alaska, all in the 30s, except the Copper River Basin or any higher 
Valley locations will be into the uh, 20s. Mid to upper 30s for the Panhandle, Aleutians, and the Bering Sea. Lower 40s for your low for Kodiak Island. Won't be much higher. Uh, 45 forecast high for Kodiak State Airport up from that 41. Otherwise, uh, Tanana Valley temperatures in the lower to mid 50s and mid 50s to Sitna Valley. Upper 40s to lower fi or upper 40s to mid 50s South Central Alaska. Same thing for the Panhandle. Highs in the 20s along the Arctic coast, but notice a uh, Point Lane nudging up above. The frost point there, about 10 degrees warmer at Nome with 43, 38 St. Paul, lower 40s for the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. Lows, uh, milder now on the Arctic coast, teens to near 20, same thing for the North Slope, teens for the Brooks Range, and then upper 20s, lower 30s, central and northern interior into the northern Cuscombe Valley, upper 20s for your lows, otherwise 30 to 35, maybe closer to 40, south central Alaska, 30s for the Panhandle, 30s for the Aleutian Range and the Alaska Peninsula, and all of the Aleutians actually, including the Pribloffs. Highs on Saturday, 55 to 62, call it, in the central interior areas, and mid to upper 50s to Sitna Valley, upper 40s to mid 50s for the Kenai Peninsula. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On to the first line weather graphic. Friday morning, we've got uh, IFR, eastern Arctic coast into the north slope, but VFR, Brooks Range, southward all the way to uh, Cook Inlet, the north Gulf Coast. Um, got some marginal VFR moving into central and southern Cook Inlet, possibly uh, Kachemak Bay, across the Barren Islands, and then up uh, covering Prince William Sound, right along the north Gulf Coast, coastal areas of the Panhandle, otherwise southeast coast VFR, Bristol Bay VFR, IFR, Alaska Peninsula. Uh, with a band there just south of the Pribilofs, another band just north of the Pribilofs with remaining south and southwest and west of Nunavak Island, and that extends up into the Bering Strait, with another band there and from the Chuk CC sliding right on down into uh, Kotzebue Sound. And now for the afternoon, goes VFR Kotzebue Sound with some IFR lifting northward to the DeLong Mountains and Point Hope area, maybe Cape Lisbourne, eastern Arctic coast, central coast there, Marginal VFR at times, becoming VFR toward uh, Kaktovik Barter Island. Stays VFR in the interior. A real nice uh, afternoon flying wise coming up all the way down to the Gulf of Alaska. Some lingering marginal VFR along the eastern north Gulf Coast and along the coast of the Panhandle, otherwise VFR. IFR, central northern Bering Sea to the Bering Strait with some uh, IFR southeast flow along that. Uh, frontal boundary, weak frontal boundary, bringing some IFR eastern Kodiak Island and along the uh, Pacific side of the Aleutian Range, central Alaska Peninsula, some VFR breaking out over the Aleutians. And then for Saturday morning, areas of uh, IFR out over the Bering Sea with a band extending across western St. Lawrence Island through the Bering Strait into uh, Chuck CC, Kotzebue Sound area. Kivalina, Point Hope, Cape Lisburn, Point Lay, right on the edge of the IFR zone there. Otherwise, good VFR, interior Alaska, looking uh, a little lower. Some IFR now showing up on the western slopes of the southern Alaska range. And uh, looks like IFR moving into Turnigan Arm and western Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula, definitely Resurrection Bay, and the eastern north Gulf Coast for the afternoon. Marginal VFR holds uh, Kenai Peninsula into Turnigan Arm and western Prince William Sound, Passage Canal. And still possibly some IFR on the eastern slopes of the Western Alaska Range. Otherwise, east side of Kodiak, Fognak Islands, VFR, or IFR. IFR, Pribilof, St. Matthew Island, uh, Marshall VFR, St. Lawrence Island. Just a real narrow band of IFR there along the north shore of uh, Seward Peninsula, along the western central Arctic coast, southern Bering Sea and Aleutians, Marshall VFR. Anatuvik, Adigan, VFR tomorrow. VFR for the Alaska Range as well, Lake Clark, Merrill, Rainy and windy VFR, Isabel and uh, Mentasta, both VFR, ceilings visibilities unlimited for Tanita and Portage, Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels, uh, 2,000 feet well south of the Alaska Peninsula there, but 2,000 feet uh, throughout the day through the central interior, at least to start the day off at the surface here, all the way up to the Brooks Range, well north of the Panhandle. Taking a look at icing, Got some isolated moderate rime icing between six and 12,000 feet, give or take there. 
uh, right up into the southwest coast and inland a ways, but south of St. Matthew Island, that covers central eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, spreading into Kodiak, and maybe southern Cook Inlet with the considerable moderate rime icing right along the central Alaska Peninsula. And then some mixed icing over the central and southern southeast coast, but that's not too significant. Uh, probably won't be any moderate at all with that. And for the jet stream, several upper level lows strung out just along or north of the Aleutians. So the main jet south of the area there, upper high pressure over the central interior, southeast flow 60 knots up and over the top of that uh, ridge there, turning westerly on the western north slope. And for uh, 9,000 feet light variable winds, Gulf of Alaska Panhandle Eastern Interior up to the Arctic coast, but much windier conditions that storm coming into the, across the southern Bering Sea. 40 to 60 knots, southeast winds, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, Aleutian Range, starting to increase Kodiak Island, southern Alaska Range, and at 3,000 feet, 55 to 60 knots, southeast winds there from uh, Iliamna Lake over to uh, Cape Newenham along the southwest coast there. Westerly's 40 knots over the central Aleutians. Southeast 40 knots, Yukon Delta over the northern Bering Sea. Light variable winds, interior Alaska and the Panhandle. Turbulence wise, uh, smooth over much of interior Alaska, but increasing considerable moderate turbulence spreading into Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, the Aleutian Range, Auckland Mountains there, Cuscoom Delta, and the central Aleutians. <music> Greetings, my little sunspots. Next week, Halley's Comet provides us with the gift of the Eta Aquarid Media Shower, peaking May 5th and 6th. To find it, get up early or stay up late and hit the skies around 5 a.m. with some warm clothes on and look east. Mars and Saturn are both visible in the eastern sky, and if you use them as guides, you can easily find where to look. The Eta Aquarids appear to emanate from Aquarius, who's hard to see IRL because he is so dim, but with the magic of TV, you can see him here. The meteors seem to come from his water jar and peak at up to 60 an hour. The streaks are bits of ice and rock shed by the famous Halley's Comet, which passes every 76 years, next time in 2061. Halley's meteors are called Earth Grazers because they make long streaks that seem to come from the horizon itself. Get out there, enjoy the show, and keep looking up. Hello everyone, this is Crane Johnson, a hydrologist with the Alaska Pacific River Forecast Center, bringing you your April 28th, 2022 Alaska Breakup Outlook and Update. We encourage everyone to be flood ready and aware of any local emergency plans that cover flooding. Uh, the bottom line key message this spring is that we expect above average flood potential from both ice jams and snowmelt flooding as we move through the months of April and May. Each year we look at three main components when we consider uh, breakup outlook and the likelihood for ice jams and snowmelt flooding. The first thing are ice thicknesses and strength. Uh, in general across Alaska we've got near normal ice thicknesses with some areas reporting uh, slightly less than normal ice thicknesses. But in general normal ice uh, throughout Alaska this winter. Snowpack is the big story this spring. Uh, we've got a near record snowpack um, or record snowpack that we'll take a quick lo uh, closer look at. And then spring weather patterns really drive uh, whether we're going to have a mechanical or thermal breakup. Mechanical breakups are when we get ice jams that form uh, previous years that had mechanical breakups for 2009 and 2013 where we did have ice jams form and, and flooding occur. Um, thermal breakups are when the ice just melts in place. There's not a strong uh, snow melt push from the mountains. Um, and an example of that would be 2016 that had a real um, thermal breakup with the ice just melting in place. The temperatures drive the rate of snowmelt, and then also the thermal condition or how strong the ice is uh, when that snowmelt uh, reaches our rivers. If you look at our snowpack across Alaska, this is a map from the NRCS, and we can see that all of Alaska is shaded in shades of blue, which indicates above average to well above average uh, snowpack. Uh, just to the right, we've got the similar map for the Yukon Territory, and we can see shades of blue. Um, and in general, the story is a uh, record snowpack from uh, central interior Alaska to the east through the upper Yukon. As we go to the north, it trends more towards normal across the north slope of Alaska. And then if we look at the Kuskokwim, it's still above normal uh, in the Kuskokwim region as well. 
but it's that record snowpack that's going to drive both our ice jam uh, threat and then the threat or potential for snowmount flooding as well as that snow starts to ripen and melt. If we look at snowmelt runoff uh, throughout the state, um, generally it follows that, that snowpack map and that we expect above average to well above average snowmelt volumes on our larger rivers throughout the state. Um, areas across interior Alaska should expect high water from snowmelt this spring and the potential for snowmelt flooding. Um, we can see that this weekend across the Fairbanks area we're going to have highs in the 50s, um, near 60, and lows around freezing. So we do expect the snowpack to start to to ripen and to begin to melt rapidly in Fairbanks, especially on southeastern slopes. Um, there's still snow in town, but that's starting to melt quickly. Other watersheds, other medium-sized watersheds that are going to see rapid snow melt and rises in rivers here shortly are the Salcha, the Chatnika, uh, the Chena, the Little Chena, and those other small to medium-sized watersheds throughout interior Alaska. If we look at our village uh, flood potential or likelihood of flooding from Snow melt and ice jams, uh, we've got a map here that shows along our larger rivers. Uh, we can see that uh, the, the likelihood of flooding ranges from, from low to moderate to high, depending on location. The one community highlighted with a high uh, flood potential is Circle, and even on an average year, Circle is more likely to flood due to ice jams, uh, just where it's situated next to the Yukon River and how, it, how low it is compared to the river itself. Other communities highlighted with a moderate to high are Amonic and Alukanuk on the lower Yukon River, Sleepmute and Revadevil on the upper Kuskokwim River, and then Antioch and Queethluk on the middle to lower Kuskokwim River. And then you can see throughout the state we've got uh, plenty of communities that are in the moderate uh, likelihood for uh, flooding this spring. And it doesn't mean a flood will happen, it just means that this is a definitely a year to prepare and be ready for both ice jam flooding and snowmelt flooding. On average throughout the state, we've got an above average um, probability of snowmelt flooding and then also above average probability of ice jams forming and the potential for ice jams flooding. Uh, if we look at the breakup um, this year, we're definitely trending towards a dynamic breakup on our larger rivers. We expect ice jams um, to form and so um, areas that uh, routinely see ice jams should be um, aware of that potential and, and take precautions. In addition to the ice jams, after that we'll see rises in our rivers due to snow melt and that's where we could potentially see some additional snow melt uh, flooding that could occur. As far as timing of breakup this year, uh, we can expect it to be a little later than normal. We've already seen that with the two locations that have broken up so far. Nikolai on the Kuskokwim River broke up on the 25th. It on average breaks up on the 23rd. It was two days late this year and then the Shoshana River uh, near Northway broke up on the 27th. In the upper Yukon, we can expect breakup to be on the outer of two to five days late, and then just one to three days late on the lower Kuskokwim River. If you look at our air temperatures, these are important and really drive the, the character of breakup each year. We can see at Eagle, we went from record low temperatures in mid-April to a gradual trending towards normal temperatures. Um, the, the, air, the bars in blue are the observed temperatures, and then the black and the red bars uh, show out into the future seven to ten days. And so we can see that um, during the, the next seven to ten days we expect near normal temperatures for Eagle, which is good. We don't see any signs of rapid warm-ups and we don't see any extended cold periods. Um, a little further down river, more into interior Alaska's Fairbanks, a little bit different story. We didn't see those record cold temperatures in our April and we've seen just a gradual warm up with near normal temperatures both observed and then over the next seven to ten days we see near normal temperatures as well. No rapid warm ups like 2009 and no extended cold periods like 2013. On the Kuskokwim we can look at McGrath and that's just had a steady slow near normal warm up this spring um, both observed and then if we look out in the seven to ten day range temperatures stay near normal as well. A little lower down on uh, the Kuskokwim at Bethel, it's been a little different story. We can see observed temperatures were well above normal earlier in April with lows above freezing at night for some of those days. And then if we look at the seven to 10 day outlook, uh, temperatures are near normal, but the freezing uh, nighttime overtime lows are just above freezing. Um, so we can expect that on the lower Yukon, the lower Kuskokwim, we've melted that snow and we're starting to decay the river ice, which will be a good thing once those rivers start to break up.
We know that in the upper Kuskokwim and across the Yukon, we still have snow and ice and haven't really started to decay that ice significantly. We'll take a quick look at the rivers around the state. That's Ninana, uh, Tan River at Ninana on the left. Uh, snow has melted from those south slopes, but we still have some snow on ice. It's beginning to darken a weekend. To the right is the Chena River through Fairbanks. Uh, we've got some ponding water. Um, snow's melted there, um, mostly in the flats around Chena, um, still hanging on in the north banks and in other areas as well. Yukon River at Eagle is on the left. Uh, it's still white, strong, intact ice. Um, we can see snow is melted there on the river bank. And then further down river, the Yukon River at Galena, still ice in place and snow on top of the ice. The Kuskokwim River, we can see um, near Sleep Mute, we've got snow on ice. It's still intact ice at Sleep Mute. And we're starting to see some ponding on the edges of the river. But then further down river at Bethel, uh, it's a different story. With the snows melted, we see much darker ice. Uh, it's beginning to deteriorate which is a good thing when it comes to break up on the lower Kuskokwim and the lower Yukon River. Each day we update our breakout map. This was from t this morning. Uh, we can see that starting to see some open areas on the Tanana and Copper Rivers and then other interior rivers as well. But in general throughout the state, most of our rivers are still ice covered. And we see some mostly open areas along the Nushigak in the far southwest of Alaska. Ice jams are difficult to forecast, so one technique tool we use is a collaborative effort between the National Weather Service, the state of Alaska, and our local communities to monitor rivers during breakup, and we call it River Watch. We expect River Watch to start on the Kuskokwim this week, and then River Watch on the Upper Yukon is expected to start in the middle of the next week. To stay up to date with the latest conditions, you can check our websites, what you're listed there on the left for both the breakup map and then the important weather forecasts and any current products. Um, related to uh, ice jams and snow melt. The image is a quick look at Dawson River upstream uh, from yesterday, still white ice in place. We're starting to see some changes and we're generally about a week out until we'll see uh, breakup begin on the Yukon River. Thanks and we'll have another update next Thursday from the River Forecast Center. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Looking at uh, today's sea ice analysis, really thinning out over the northern Bering Sea especially along the southwest coast and the heavier ice pack now shifting off to the northwest over the northwest Bering Sea and from about St. Matthew, St. Lawrence Island up through the Bering Strait now where the heaviest ice is. Moving on to the uh, coastal water forecasts, we've got light winds all along the panhandle there. Easterly is 10 to 15 knots, even lighter up on the north coast. Variable at 5, seas down to 3 feet, but 6 feet in the south coast. Inside channels, Variable winds, 5 to 10 knots with slight seas. And for Saturday, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots over the central and southern inside waters. Lincoln on Glacier Bay, northwest winds at 15 knots with 3 foot seas. Out along the coast, big increase in the winds from tomorrow. For Saturday, first day of the weekend, small craft advisories, southeast winds 30 knots, seas 9 to 11 feet. Prince William Sound, variable winds 10 knots. Northern Cook Inlet, variable winds at 10 knots. Southern Cook Inlet, northeast winds 20 knots. Small craft advisories for the Barren Islands of Kamishak Bay, east winds 25 to 30 knots. And for the North Gulf Coast, variable to east winds 10 to 15 knots with three to four foot seas. And those winds increased dramatically on Saturday. East winds 40 knots, good for gales there for the North Gulf Coast. Seas building to 15 feet. East winds increasing to 40 knots for the Barren Islands, seas just under 20 feet, and Kamishak Bay, gale warnings also, northeast winds 40 knots with 14 foot seas, small craft advisories, southern Cook Inlet, northeast winds 25 knots, Prince William Sound, east winds at 20 knots. Kodiak Island, east southeast winds 30 knots, seas to 10 feet, gale warnings for the Alaska Peninsula, south to southeast winds 35 knots with 9 to 12 foot seas and 40 knot east winds in the forecast for Bristol Bay tomorrow. Seas at about 8 feet. Those will fall back to small craft advisory levels for Bristol Bay on Saturday. Out of the northeast at 25 knots. Light variable winds for the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula and southwest 20 knot winds for the Pacific side of the peninsula and gale warnings for Kodiak Island. Northeast winds 35 knots. On Alaska and Unmak Island, eastern Aleutians, southwest winds 25 to 30 knots, seas 11 to 15 feet, Adak and Atka, west southwest 30 knots, and small craft advisories on Chitka Island, west winds 25 knots, 20 knot winds from the northwest from Shimia to Kiska. 
Those will swing around to the northeast, increased up 30 knots on Saturday from Shimia to Kiska. West winds 30 knots for Amchitka Island. West southwest 25 to 30 knots for Adak and Atka. And for Unmak Island, west southwest winds 30 knots on Alaska Island. South to southwest winds 15 to 25 knots with seas in those areas running 8 to 15 feet. 40 knot easterlies in the forecast for the uh, Cuscom Delta Coast tomorrow. Otherwise, for the Pribilof, St. Matthew Island, Yukon Delta Coast, all looking at east winds at 30 knots with seas around 10 feet. St. Lawrence Island, east winds 25 knots, seas 4 feet. Outlook for Saturday, St. Lawrence Island, small craft advisories. Same thing for the Yukon Delta Coast, small craft advisories for northeast winds 25 knots. St. Matthew Island, northeast at 30. Pribilof, winds east 20 knots. The Cuscombe Delta Coast, winds northeast at 15. And for the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast tomorrow, east or south southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, and then southeast 15 on the central coast, from Point Lay to Cape Thompson. Look for southeast winds at 10 knots, and Cape Thompson to Wales east at 15. Those turn north at 15 knots from Wales to Cape Beaufort on Saturday. Western Arctic coast south winds 10 knots, central coast southeast at 10, and the east side eastern Beaufort Sea coast east southeast winds 5 to 10 knots. For tonight, uh, light winds, maybe a little fog and flurry condition continuing in areas of the Arctic coast, but nothing significant. And some snow showers possible, uh, Brooks Range, Western Brooks Range, with uh, showers and rain increasing. Kodiak Island spreading up, possibly the Kamishak Bay, maybe even Southern Cook Inlet later tonight. Gales and rain heavy at times into the Alaska Peninsula. And that front uh, moves over the peninsula tomorrow and gradually starts to weaken, but still some windy conditions moving into Bristol Bay and the southwest coast. Showers Kodiak Island, mostly cloudy, chance of showers southern Alaska, mostly sunny central interior on out to the Arctic coast. Risk of showers with partial clearing for the panhandle. And for uh, Saturday, we've got uh, dry conditions for the southeast coast with a few sun breaks. Same thing for the Copper River Basin. Wind and rain increasing along the Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound area with rain over the Alaska Peninsula and the next system starting to spread rain into the far western Aleutians late in the day. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.